Let's bloody go. Premier League predictions time. Happy weekend to you. You made it. If you're working this weekend, I honour you. You are smashing it. Keep going, mate. I'm currently located inside of a Premier Inn in Royal Leamington Spa. If there's anyone watching this video that lives in Leamington Spa, that's from Leamington Spa, mate, your town is beautiful. This might even be a city. I was walking around last night and I was like, mate, I could probably live it. Lovely part of the world, a place that I will definitely be revisiting. And I mentioned that I'm inside the Premier Inn, right? Lenny Henry was right, mate. He was right all along. The comfiest beds of all time. Probably the best night's sleep I've ever had. That's not exactly true, but never mind. After a mega game week 35, it is now time for Premier League predictions game week 36. The end of the season is just two weeks away. And what an incredible season we've had. I remember making a tweet at the start of the season saying that we will look back on the 22-23 season as a golden era in the Premier League. And to be honest, mate, I don't think I've been wrong. Who would have predicted last week that Fulham would have beaten Leicester 5-3? Forrest were to win 4-3. And the biggest shock of the weekend, Brighton losing 5-1 to Everton at the Amex. It was a bonkers weekend, and I'm predicting even more bonkers results this weekend. Remember, if you're new here and you want your team to win this weekend, I suggest you hit that subscribe button just down below. Otherwise, they will lose 6-0. Trust me, happened to Wolves only two weeks ago. So hit that subscribe button, otherwise your team will lose 6-0. Don't forget that we have 10 Premier League matches all the way from Saturday lunchtime until Monday night, mate. It's huge. This game week can shape the relegation, can take, shape the top four, and can even shape the title race. Right, kicking us off. 12.30 tomorrow lunchtime. Leeds versus Newcastle. Leeds, in my eyes, and I've said this for a couple of weeks now, they are dead and buried in my eyes. One of the worst teams that I've seen throughout the whole season in the Premier League. There is no way in hell, and I, I, I love the notion of Big Sam keeping them in the Premier League, but it's not going to happen. The fairy tale is not going to come through. It is not going to have a happy ending. Last week, finished with a 2-1 loss to Manchester City. Of course, they were always going to lose it. But great. Yeah, they did get, a, did get a goal on the score sheet. But it wasn't enough. They're playing a dominant Newcastle side who have been playing outrageous football for the entire season in my eyes. I've said from the game that we played and we lost 4-1 to them at Craven Cottage. They're the best team that I've seen at the Cottage all season. It's been an absolute joy to watch and they will secure Champions League football this weekend of a massive win. Four wins in their last five away Premier League matches as well. Don't you worry, the form will continue for Newcastle. Prediction, Leeds 1, Newcastle 3. Right, straight to the Midlands, Villa versus Spurs. I've given Unai Emery so much love since he took over at Villa Park. Back-to-back -back losses. I think I cursed Villa a little bit, mate, to be honest with you. Two weeks ago, I said they would lose to Man United. They lost. Said that they would win last weekend. They lost again. So, Villa fans, I can only apologise for my shoddy predictions. Hopefully, I can make it up to you this weekend. Spurs, I am completely lost for words with them, to be honest with you. Um, I think they're going to qualify for the Europa Conference League. No Europa League football, no Champions League football. I think the Conference League, like West Ham, is their standard. People think, well, Spurs fans think they are a bigger club than they actually are. Um, they blew their season with Antonio Conte, as far as I'm concerned. I remember doing a video in December saying that they should have sacked him. They should have sacked him following the Boxing Day draw to Brentford. And it just all went downhill from there. Went out of the Champions League. Nothing really to show for in the league as well. They just kept on for him for far too long. If they sacked him then, they probably could have had a stronger end to the season. Spurs haven't won any, any of their last eight away matches. In their last two, they've conceded 10 goals. Embarrassing, if you ask me. The away form won't pick up tomorrow. Villa fans, be very excited. You're going to witness... A 2-1 victory at Villa Park. Right, Chelsea versus Nottingham Forest, Stamford Bridge. Well, 
Of course, Frank Lampard had to pick up his first win at some point as interim manager of Chelsea. 3-1 victory away at Bournemouth last week. I was cynical, prayed for their downfall, always will, always have been. Probably a slight hint of karma. I think I predicted that Bournemouth would win 3-2. Obviously, it went the complete other way. Chelsea do have the ability to be great in my eyes. They have class all over the pitch. And it's just finding that right manager to make all of these players gel together. Because right now, if you put it in FIFA terms, their chemistry is probably 10% out of 100. And if you played Ultimate Team, you know that that, that is absolutely toilet. I can't see Chelsea recording back-to-back -back wins though, mate. They've not kept a clean sheet in seven matches. They need a new goalkeeper in the summer. I'm not having Kepper. I'm not having Mendy. We've known these issues for far too long now. The Chelsea just obsessed with buying wingers. Every time I see Fabrizio Romano tweet, Chelsea are linked to another winger. Improve in the places that need to be improved, like goalkeeping. We've known that for like the last three to four years now. They took like on a Nottingham Forest side that is fighting for their lives in the Premier League. Forest, three points clear of Leicester, who are 18th in the table. I think they're going to put up a mighty fight, to be honest with you, mate. Huge result, winning 4-3 on Monday night against Southampton. We know literally how potty and how god-awful Southampton are. But Forrest is going to be up for this one. I imagine that away in at Stamford Bridge is going to be lively, mate. Chelsea 2, Nottingham Forest 2. Right, Palace versus Bournemouth. Arguably, probably one of the most boring fixtures of the whole entire weekend. Old Roy hasn't lost a home match at Selhurst Park since returning to the club. I think they made the right decision by getting rid of Patrick Vieira. They are finally able to score some goals and put some points on the board. Par Palace currently 12th in the Premier League table. And I think they've finished 12th or 11th or 13th in those three positions for the last 10,000 years. When I look at Palace and I look at the table, those positions, they're, they're never top half. If, if, if Palace finish top half, then something incredibly weird has happened. There's been a glitch in the Matrix. 12th is where they're going to finish. It's where they are right now. It's where they're going to remain. Bournemouth have been sensational under Gary O'Neill. Easily, 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 easily my manager of the season, mate. We all wrote them off as soon as O'Neill got appointed and had that torrid time with Scott Parker. Bournemouth, Fulham fan here. We have some sort of like solidarity. We both had to deal with the drivel that is Scott Parker. Three wins from their last five Premier League matches, but I can't see a win in tomorrow's match at Selhurst Park. 1-1 one, one between Palace and Bournemouth. Right, Manchester United versus Wolves. I actually predicted Man United to lose last week, and it came in. Told you once, I'll tell you again, I am a genius, mate, and you know it. I can see United dropping out of the top four, to be honest with you. Liverpool are rising like a phoenix from the ashes, mate. Man United are dropping points left, right and centre. And I can't see a saviour in their ranks. Probably quite harsh because Marcus Rashford has had an incredible season. Almost racking up 30 goals in all competitions. De Gea, listen, I think De Gea is a world-class goalkeeper. And there's still talks about his contract at Manchester United. But he makes just far too many mistakes. And that, that shot that he parried against West Ham on Sunday was just unforgivable. Like a guy of his quality. Who's not even the Spanish number one anymore. Makes too many mistakes, mate. But yeah, great. He's still world class. Marcus Rashford, zero goals in his last three matches. He needs to wake up if they want to secure top four. We know that Veghorst isn't the answer. We know that he's not going to get a long term deal. His head's probably down, rightly so. But maybe start Martial up top instead of him. Rashford's so good at coming in from the left. Maybe start Marcus Rashford. Up top, I mentioned that Man United can't score, but Wolves haven't won in their last six league matches. Wait, that's not right. That's not right because they beat they beat Villa. Oh God, who wrote this? Idiot. Me, I wrote this. I mentioned that Man United can't score, but Wolves haven't won. I, do you know I wrote this at like two a.m. this morning, so I was obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the wrong stats. Wolves can win, but they won't win tomorrow. Man United beat Wolves 
1-0. Southampton versus Fulham. A loss for Southampton. We'll see them relegated back down to the Championship. And thank goodness for that, mate. They stink. Their most memorable performances in the Premier League in their 11 years in the top flight was probably two 9-0 losses. Would be great if Fulham could beat them 9-0 tomorrow. So you get a three-peat. You get a triple whammy, mate. Southampton fans... I want to hear from you in the comment section just down below. Was it the right decision? In hindsight, retrospect, was it the right decision to sack Ralph Hasenhutl all of those months ago? A man that, in my opinion, understood the club, should have been given the opportunity. I know like results weren't picking up and you were, were sort of just in a limbo for so many years of not really improving and whatnot. But still, I think you should have gone until the end of the season and sacked him then. Not bringing in that waste of space that is Nathan Jones because he was pathetic and I would love to never see him in the Premier League ever again. They're going down, they're done, they stink, it's time to go. Lost property bin meter is going mental. Fulham, the Mighty Whites have been unreal all season. Of course, I'm going to have a bit of bias to that. Who would have predicted the season that they've had? Mitrovic returns tomorrow and I cannot wait, mate. He's going to be hungry. His band comes to an end and he's going to be in search of goals. Imagine the scenes if he pops up with a goal or two or three. I think he will. He'll be up for it. 5-1 win over Leicester on Monday. I didn't expect that one, to be honest. Some questionable defending. It was a very bizarre game being at Craven Cottage. But Southampton are going to be relegated tomorrow. And Fulham are going to win 3-0. Right, let's fly through quickly the rest of the weekend's matches. Brentford won. West Ham won. I will never, ever, 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 ever predict Brentford to win on this channel. I hate them. And I'll never say that they've had a good season. Bang average in my eyes. West Ham beat Alkmaar last night. But I reckon a lot of these players might actually be leggy from the European matches as well. Busy schedule for West Ham. 1-0 draw at the Brentford Community Stadium. Mate, this is going to be the biggest shock of the weekend. And trust me, put a fiver on this one. Everton 2, Manchester City 1. We're going to see a shock at the Etihad this weekend. Mark my words. I've just got a feeling within me, mate. Everton are fighting for their lives in the Premier League and they will win at the Etihad to boost their relegation hopes. City, they have to slip at one point and the title race, we just need some more drama. Sean Dyche masterclass pending and now to North London, Arsenal 3, Brighton 2. Mikel Arteta's men need to go all guns blazing as far as I'm concerned because if I'm predicting that Manchester City are going to drop points, Arsenal need to follow up with that and pick up three points. Just think about the title race going down to the world. As a neutral, this would be incredible viewing. It's what we need. It's what we want. We want theatre in the Premier League. Brighton, they're going to be wanting to pick up three points after losing 5-1 to Everton at the Amex. But they're facing an Arsenal team that is fresh off the back of beating Newcastle at St. James's Park. Right, Monday then, the final game, the one we're building up to, Leicester Th Leicester, I can't even get my words out. Leicester versus Liverpool. Leicester are going down in my eyes, mate. They were absolutely pathetic on Monday. Ah, probably the worst team, along with Leeds, that I've seen at Fulham all season. Their defence is just all over the place. Valt 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 Fast does not know how to defend. I think, even though I made a video on Jamie Vardy like two weeks ago, I think he's officially washed now. Tielemans is a ghost. Goes missing in that midfield and has wanted out of the club for so long. Liverpool, on the other hand, at the time of this recording, just one point behind Manchester United for the top four. Though Manchester United do have a game in hand. Jurgen Klopp is going to guide Liverpool into the Champions League. Mark my words. They will be a force again next season. Challenging for the title. Getting into the latter stages of the Champions League. And probably picking up a domestic trophy as well. That was Premier League predictions for this weekend. Only two more to go. It's so sad, but we'll have plenty of content over the summer. Please drop your predictions just down below. We'd love to know your guys' thoughts. And please remember to like and subscribe.